Hi, in this video, we're going to ask Unity Game Services to actually create us a relay server. We're going to get the information to connect to that relay server and the join code. And we're going to update the lobby data so that the other client can connect to us. And then lastly, we're going to move into the map that was selected uh, in the lobby UI. Let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a method for when the host pl the click the start button. So let's go back down here. Private void uh, on start button, and, uh, button clicked. So here, um, and this method is gonna be able to be uh, less uh, passed to here as a listener on click uh, dot add listener and then on start button click cool then we're going to want to still do here always um, remove the listener whenever this object is disabled uh, on click that uh, remove uh, oops remove all listener there it is and then here what we actually want to do is we want to so this is going to be async and we want to wait and uh, call the game lobby manager await game lobby manager that instance dot and we're going to do start game and we're actually going to pass him the map that we're in so let's go here uh change this to map uh no 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 not map scene name scene name um because he's going to transition us into the game so let's go and generate this method and we can uh yeah we can have the scene name here and uh, there we go. Now we're going to create the relay service, the relay manager. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a new manager. Oops, not here, but in the manager folder. Add a new class, which is going to be called the relay manager. Okay, so this is actually going to be also a singleton a relay manager because we only want one of that class. And it's going to have only two methods, which is going to be async, uh, create relay uh create relay yeah i can write uh which is going to take the max connection uh so that's good so that's gonna make it so oh uh, yeah it's gonna return a task which is actually a string there we go the task we're gonna need oh yeah to uh, import it from a system threading task you can see up there and um, so the in max connection is going to be so that the relay knows when to actually block a new connection because there's already in max player on that server. Um, so yeah, so the first thing we're going to do and it's going to return us an allocation is uh, a wait for the relay service dot instance dot create allocation async. What it wants the max connection and a string region. Uh, for the region, us, we're not going to pass anything. I think by default, it's just going to use the region that the, the host is in. Uh, but if you had like a more um, complicated algorithm that lets you determine the best region for the player, um, like a matchmaking thing, um, where you actually know both players that are going to connect to the server beforehand, and then you can find kind of a region that is in between, you could pass it here. But for us, it's not. They're joining each other, so the host region is going to be perfect for us. So let's go pass in the max connection. And then the way that this thing works is we need a code that we can share and give to uh, the other player. So we're going to store it here, private string um, uh, join code. It's pretty similar uh, as the lobby, right? Uh, join code equals um, await relay service dot instance dot uh, get join code async. And it's just one uh, an allocation ID. So we pass in the allocation ID. Um, then uh, what it uh, gave us with the allocation that is important for us is the server endpoint. So this is actually where we're going to connect. So um, the way that this connects to the netco netcode for game object library for the multiplayer in Unity is that you get here the host and the uh, port, the uh, IP and the port that you're going to connect to, and then you're going to pass it along to the netcode uh, for game object. So it's important that we keep a reference to that. Um, and also the connection data because the connection data links the lobby and the relay manager so that if you quit a game or anything, you get back into the same lobby. Uh, so, okay, so let's go here. So we're going to actually get that uh, endpoint. So it's a little bit complicated, but um, what we want, it's a relay server uh, endpoint. 
here. And the protocol for that is DTLS. Um, I'll let you read on your own for the protocol because it's uh, um, there's there's different protocol. You can have like a UDP or DTLS, and I think you have also TCP, but this is the equivalent of our secure TCP connection. Um, so for that, we're gonna have uh, allocation dot um, server endpoint dot first, and we're gonna go the connection where the connection dot connection type is equals to DTLS. There you go. So that's gonna give us the DTLS connection, and then we can have some information here that we need. So private uh, string, uh, the uh, actual IP where we want to connect and a private in for the port. We, uh, the port we, we're gonna have to um, connect on that IP. So let's go here, let's put some space in here. Okay, so here what we can now do is the IP is equal to dtls.host and the port is equal to the dtls connection dot port. And then we can put another thing that we need, which, uh, um, in fact, um, we're going to add two things. So private byte array, which is going to be the connection data. We're not going to really handle the byte part. For us, it's going to return as a string. I'm going to show you um, later. And we could actually already store it as a string. But just in case we need it as a byte down the road, we I prefer to store it in its raw format. Um, and we're going to want also um, here um, system.uid, which is going to be the allocation ID, just in case we need it uh, further down the road. So let's go here. Um, and here we're going to store those information. So we're going to do allocation ID equals allocation, uh, sorry, this allocation that allocation ID. And then the connection data equals allocation dot connection data. There we go. And then what we want to return to the person who actually create this is the Schwein code. Because um, that join code is going to be what we pass on in the lobby uh, data uh, to uh, actually let the other player connect to us. Uh, while we're here, let's create the join method. So async uh, task bool because we're just going to say oh yeah it worked or not join uh, relay and then we want the string uh, the uh, the join code okay so now that we have that um, there's only a couple things that change join allocation um, allocation equals uh, relay uh, service and we're going to have to await that service that instance dot um, uh, join uh, allocation async which it takes the code so the join code um, we're going to actually store it also join code equals uh, join code um, so there you go now we can join and then it's exactly the same thing as here you uh, reuse this and you put it in here and then you return true okay we we could do some error handling right now i'm not going to do it but um this is things like, since it's in the game framework, we can always optimize later. So um, I don't like reusing code. You, uh, I would like it to be in uh, in kind of um, a different uh, function. But the problem is that the, they did that weird thing where join allocation and allocation don't have the, an interface that allows me that to generate, like do a uh, relay join and then pass the allocation and have this all works. Since, and since they don't have... Um, uh, a common interface i cannot like re i cannot put this into a separate uh, method but so we're gonna have to live with that um, we could oops sorry uh, we could put that part in a, in a different and uh, just pass a relay server endpoint and it kind of extract all of this but right now i don't mind this if it if i need other methods and i, I had code and need to duplicate it again then i'm gonna normalize it um, so that's it for uh, the Relay Manager. Now let's go to the game lobby and make uh, that code part of our lobby data. Okay, so now in the game lobby manager, we can actually call that method. So we're gonna do um, string code equals, or let's call it uh, join relay code equals um, await relay manager dot instance dot 
create relay and we're gonna pass him the max number of connection. Uh, right now, the max number of connection, we have it once here, but uh, art code it, uh, max number of players. I'm gonna put a variable for that. So let's go here. I'm gonna put it here too, oh, here too, and we're gonna declare it up there. So let's go here. We're, I'm gonna keep it as private. Not, I don't wanna modify it. I just wanna have it centralized. So if whenever I wanna modify it, I can have a centralized place to um, modify it. So I'm just gonna art code it to four right now. It's gonna be constant. So uh, there we go. So we have the max number of connections. So now we have that relay code. We need to kind of add it to the lobby data. So let's go with lobby data uh, dot, and we're gonna create a method set relay join code. Uh, that I actually already did. I'm gonna show you what it does. And we're passing the relay code. So basically here, it's the same thing that we already did. That's why I'm, I'm not putting it in the video, but you have a setter, it joined the code. We just added the code as a variable here, the relay code. And the only thing we need to do is whenever we serialize, we wanna send it to the network. And whenever we receive an update, we wanna deserialize it if it's there. So then it's going to be set there and it's going to be that uh, the way. So now we're going to use the serialize function to actually update the lobby. And whenever he receives it, it's, um, it's updating its state and then it's going to have it. So let's go in here. Uh, now we just need to update uh, our lobby data. So uh, await lobby manager dot instance dot update lobby data. And the only thing we need, and that's what's cool about everything we did, we did is like, now nah, I just need to serialize this. I don't... I don't have to do anything else. We are, we've already done all the binding and stuff. So this is the, uh, this is the part where uh, it pays off and uh, makes our life easier. Um, so now that we have it, we also have information that we want to store on the player. Because as I said, the allocation ID and the connection data kind of makes the bridge between the uh, lobby and the relay manager. So that if you lose your connection to the relay manager, you can get back into a lobby. So we're going to want to store that. So Let's go and do string allocation ID equals relay manager sure dot uh, instance dot get um, allocation ID. Okay. And we're going to do the same for the connection data. As I said, I put it as a string because that's, that's how the actual player update uh, wants it. It wants it as a, as a string. So dot instance dot uh, get connection data and we don't have to put any await here because the relay manager these things are reading information we already have so it's not making any async call so let's go here let's generate uh, first this one uh, I love to put my getter at the top since start are like function that are pretty quick and simple and we're gonna return connect uh, no not connection data in fact allocation ID dot to string okay and we can do the other method, and you know what, since I, it's going to create it at the bottom anyway, uh, I'm going to type it, public string get allocation data, uh, and it's going to return the connection data dot to string. There we go. And then I'm just going to remove some space here. And uh, yeah, this is it. In fact, this is it. So we have our connection data and our allocation ID. So the only thing we need now, and it, we're going to need to change some code here, but um, to support it, but at the instance that um, update player data. So the first thing I want is the player ID. <clears throat> we have that in the local player data, so that ID. And then it wants the actual data, so local player data that's serialized. At this point, we could change the interface and have it so that it only use um, uh, local player uh, data. But since um, on the other side of this lobby, it receives this parameter as a just a dictionary string string, not knowing what the context, uh, what, what, what it actually contains, I prefer to keep it separate this way. Um, they don't have to know what's in the actual local uh, lobby player data. Uh, and then we're gonna add the allocation ID and then the connection data. So it's gonna tell us, oops. So um, I've actually uh, done this uh, already, so we can just uh, take a look at it. So actually I've added those two parameters at the end. So um, I'm just gonna talk about that little syntax here because it's pretty cool. So default means um, this makes this parameter optional. That means if you have it or you don't have it, it's gonna put the default value if you don't pass anything in here. So the default value for a string is, is um, this. 
But since it's like at the language level and, and I don't know, for some reason they want to change what's the default for the string, putting the default keyword is actually good because it's going to put whatever for C sharp, this version of C sharp, whatever string is uh, a default string, you know? So um, we can add those two parameters and then we can just pass it here. And the update player option, we pass the allocation ID and the connection info to our connection data. And that's actually all we need to do for uh, to link the lobby manager and uh, the, the lobby and the relay. So we've updated. Now here comes the cool thing. We can now um, actually move into the map. So let's load async and pass in the scene name. And believe it or not, we are now... We... we we're not connected to the relay server, but we have all the information to connect to it. And because we're not going to connect here with the with the relay service, this information are actually good for when we actually get to the map. We're going to have the netcode for game object man uh, network manager that's going to need to connect to an IP and a host. And woo, the relay service has all the information. So uh, we're going to have we we stored them uh, in our relay manager, and we're going to be able to um, connect with it. So now let's go in Unity and uh, do a little demo. Okay, so in Unity, um, we've already created the map scene from the previous video. So now we're just going to go into the init scene, make sure you're in that. And then we're going to hit play. We're going to have the same menu, host. We can select the map. Let's go to the green one. Ready? So ready, our start button. We click start. And we are on the green map. We can test that it works also with um, other maps just to make sure that, you know, we, we, we test. Oh, we test over here. So we start with the red map and then boom, we're in a red map. And we can even see here in the logs that um, the Unity uh, relay service actually output us the region that it selected. The best region for us was North America, Northeast one. So here it is. We got a, a relay uh, connection working. And there it is for the relay service part two. In the next video, we're gonna actually let the client um, join the relay server and also move into the map. And now we're gonna have two players and we're gonna be able to uh, start our game. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.